Hi everyone, I'm Alice. Welcome back to another GRE video. Today we're going to be talking about slopes and specifically slopes in comparison questions. Sometimes they talk a lot about theoretical reasonings and today we're going to break all of those down so that when you see them you're going to be able to answer them right away. I do offer private tutoring so if you're interested in that more info at the end of the video or down below. In case in case you haven't seen the video that I made talking more specifically about slopes and how to calculate them, which I'll leave in the cards here, slopes measure essentially the steepness of a line. A lot of times you'll see a line written in this way y equals mx plus b, where you have x and y, which represent the actual placement of different points on the graph. And M here represents the slope, and B is going to be a constant. M and B are numbers that never change. A good hard and fast rule is that when you have a line that goes from the bottom left to the top right, that will give you a positive slope. And when you have a line that goes from the top left to the bottom right, that will give you a negative slope, just like I've shown you here. In order to actually calculate the slope or what slope really looks like is this. An easy way to remember that is rise over run, meaning the change in the y, so the change in the height, divided by the change in the x, the run, or how far the line moves horizontally. In order to actually calculate that, if you have two points, we want to give the points numbers. We want to label the points so that you're not getting confused. So we have x1 and y1, x2 and y2. And to get the difference and to get the slope, we have the change in the x, y2 minus y1, divided by the change in the x, which is x2 minus x1. When you have the actual points, you can actually plug those numbers in. The problem is that when you see a lot of the comparison questions on the GRE, they're going to look something like this. Here we actually do have the points, so we can do a few calculations, and I'll use this to illustrate the idea. So when we see the actual question, you'll be able to answer that. So again, remember that the slope is the change in the x divided by the change in the y. The key here when you look at two lines like this is to notice where they intersect. The reason is that that intersection is where the x and the y values are the same for both of those lines. So what we're going to do here is take advantage of that fact and look at how the change in x and the change in y differs between the two lines. What I've done here is I've drawn a green line to represent basically any change in the line. So we have that point, that intersection that you can see, and that green line can be drawn anywhere and basically just represents somewhere else on those two lines. What you want to look at is where the two lines are in relation to the green line. The reason that we do this is because because the green line is straight up and down, the x values are going to be the same. Remember, the x value is how far the line is horizontally. So what we have here is the fact that we have the intersection point between those two lines there on the bottom left. And on that green line, the x values of those two lines are going to be the same. So that purple point on the top and the red point on the bottom are still going to have the same change in x. The reason is because the x value at the intersection is the same, the x values at the green line are the same. What that allows us to do is look only at the change in y to determine how the two slopes of these lines compare. 
And what we want to do is, again, recognize that the change in x, that blue line that I've drawn horizontally, that is the same between both of these lines because they have the same x values at that intersection and at that green line. So again, now we just have to look at the change in the y. So with the red point, we can see, I don't know exactly where that is, but according to the graph, it might be around a negative one or a negative two. But the point remains that you can see that the red line increases in y just a little bit. And what we want to do is compare that to the other line. So this purple line shows you the change in y, the difference in the height of the purple point. So as you can see, this purple line increases a lot more than the red line. So what you can see is that there is a much larger increase, a much larger growth with the purple point or the purple graph at the top. And what that tells us is that that has a higher slope. Again, because we have change in y over change in x, we're comparing these two lines. And when the change in x for both of those lines is the same, again, that's represented by the blue line. Remember, the change in the x is the same. We can look only at the change in the y to determine which slope is larger. So here, with the purple line, you actually have the equation of that line. So that's y equals 2x plus 5. And remember, y equals mx plus b to represent each of those components. m is the 2. So the slope of this top line represented where the purple dot is, that slope is 2. We also have the actual equation of the line with the red dot on it and you can see that is y equals one half x minus five over two. Here the m value from y equals mx plus b, the m value is one half and the slope of that line is one half. So you can see theoretically how we came up with the fact that that top line has a larger slope and you can see that confirmed by the actual equations themselves because, of course, 2 is larger than 1 half. So that's the idea that we want to get out when we're looking at these comparison questions is because when we draw a vertical line, like the green line that I drew, the change in the x is the same for the top line and the bottom line. So we can look at just the change in the y to determine which one has a bigger slope. Again, in this case, you can see the purple change is much higher and the red change is much lower, meaning that the top line has a much larger change or a much larger slope. Now, looking at this again, without any of those numbers, we can see here, this is one of the actual ETS provided sample questions for the comparison question. We have a comparison question of slope of line K versus the slope of line L. So again, we're going to just do the exact same technique. So since we can see that these two lines cross at point P, we can do exactly what we just did. So first, we're gonna draw that green line. Again, it doesn't matter where you draw that green line. The point is that the green line represents where the x values of lines k and l are going to be the same. So any vertical line, the x values are going to be the same along those. So again, when you draw a line like that, you want to identify those two red and purple points. 
And the blue line shows that we have, again, the same change in X. So the change in X is the same for lines K and L. But if we look at the change in the Y, the red value increases a little bit and the purple value increases a lot more. So we are just looking at that change in the Y. From this, we know that K has a larger slope. So for comparison questions, you're going to know that quantity A is going to be larger, and that's going to be choice A. So one thing that you want to be aware of is that this is slightly different when we're looking at lines with negative slopes. The idea is still the same. So here we still have a graph with two lines that intersect at some point. Here they've labeled the lines L1 and L2. So we can just say line one and line two. The comparison is between the slope of line one quantity A, and quantity B, the slope of line 2. So we're going to do the exact same technique because of the exact same principles. So again, we have the green line representing the x values staying the same. We have the two points on each of those lines. And we recognize here that the change in the X is the same for lines 1 and lines 2. Remember, again, that's important because the slope is calculated by dividing by the change in the X. If the change in the X is the same, we can look at only the change in the Y and determine which number is larger or smaller. So here we have the same change in X again. And what you can see is this time the red value, the change in the Y, is much longer because we have to go all the way down. And here for the purple line, we are decreasing going down just a little bit. So we can see that clearly the red line is changing more it's becoming more negative and the purple line is decreasing just a little bit so it's be it's becoming just a little bit negative so i've written this down here to make sure that you can understand it smaller change less negative that's the purple as you can see for the red we have a larger change the change is bigger but that means it's more negative so now if you think about that a little bit, more negative on a number line is actually, for example, the difference between negative 3 and negative 7. Technically, the difference to the negative 7 is longer, right? Because there are 7 units between 0 and negative 7. There are only three units between zero and negative three. However, if you know your number line, you know that negative seven is actually a smaller number than negative three. And the reason is because for negative numbers, the larger the number is, the smaller the number it actually is. So if that's confusing, basically, as you go to the left on the number line, the numbers are smaller. As you go to the right on the number line, the numbers are bigger. And you can remember that just by looking at the positive numbers. And that same idea applies to negative numbers. So even though negative 7 might seem larger, negative 7 is actually smaller than negative 3. So negative 7 is smaller than negative 3. That's an example. So when we look at all of this again, the red with more negative, that actually gives you a smaller slope than the purple with less negative. So what we have here is that line 1 with the purple dot actually has a larger slope 
And again, the reason for that is because with negative numbers, you want the smaller, the quote unquote smaller negative number. So just remember that when you're dealing with negative signs, you want to make sure to always check yourself. You can always draw a number line on your scratch paper or anything if it really helps you out or if you need to remind yourself of that. Just to recap, the slope of a line is the change in the y divided by the change in the x. The way that you look at it when you don't have any numbers and you have two lines that intersect with each other is that you draw the green line because the green line represents the place where the two lines have the equal x value. And what you're doing there is going from that place where the two lines intersect to these new points. So the new points are the purple dot and the red dot that I've drawn. That blue horizontal line shows you the change in the x that's the same for both lines. For the red line, that shows you the change in the Y for that line. And the purple shows you the change in the Y for that line. Here, because the purple line shows a lot more positive change, we know that the top line has a larger slope than the bottom line. Hopefully this makes sense. As you look at a few more of these questions, you should start to get it. Otherwise, you can always rewatch this video and hopefully that will help you out a lot. If you need a little bit of extra help, I do offer private GRE tutoring. It is totally dependent on what your needs and wants are because you're just going to be working with me. The way that it works is we can do either writing, verbal, or and or quant, and I work with you to determine what you want to look at, what content, what kind of example questions, and what kind of study resources that you want to use. I can provide all of those as well and teach you a lot of the strategies and show you a lot of examples on how to do different types of questions. I also offer flexible scheduling and payment and as you can see one of my former students said that I am very personable and the tutoring sessions were very productive and professional even though he hadn't written any type of essays for over five years. Um, so if that's something you're interested in please see more information down below and get in touch. Otherwise thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you have a great day. Bye.